Okay, so chapter five, we're still talking about probabilities, but specifically we're talking about discrete probabilities. Do you remember what discrete versus continuous actually meant? Do you remember that? One of these would be discrete. Uh, the number of people in this classroom is either, con either discrete or continuous. The number of people in this classroom, that would be considered definitely discrete, because it's countable or it's finite. That's what discrete meant. So discrete, what we're talking about, is countable or finite. As I was saying a little while ago, chapter five is going to deal with discrete probabilities, things that are countable and finite, outcomes that are countable and finite. In chapter six, we'll talk about continuous probabilities. But in either case, what these chapters signify is the probability of things happening, the probability of what will probably happen. That's what we're, we're trying to get to because that's going to let us make decisions in the, in the later chapters. A couple vocabulary words that we need to know before we really jump into this stuff. Some more vocab. I know your favorite, right? Gotta love that vocabulary. The first one, this is not too bad, we only have three or four. First one is what is called a random variable. Now, I know you've heard of the word random before, and you've heard of the word variable before, but what does it mean for a random variable? Variable, mean, variable means something can change. Random means by chance. So what a random variable is, <clears throat> is the outcomes you can get from a procedure that is based on chance. The outcomes you can get, changeable, right? Like rolling a die, you can get six different outcomes there, couldn't you? It depends on chance what you get, right? So that's what a random variable is. It's the, all of our outcomes based on chance. Or in other words, a variable that has a value for each outcome and those outcomes are determined by chance. And we also use the letter X for our variable. A value. Variable X has a value for each outcome of a procedure that is determined by chance. So random variable, random means by chance, variable means uh, the outcomes that are changeable, such as rolling a die, we would have a certain number of outcomes, the variable would take the place of those outcomes, and the outcome that you get is dependent on the chance of you rolling that die. So the probability of rolling a three, or a four, or five, or six, or one, or two. So that's a random variable. Are you guys understand the idea of a random variable? And we'll talk more about some examples of random variables in just a little while. The other thing we gotta talk about is what's called a probability distribution. We've seen frequency distributions, haven't we? Frequency just took a certain number of classes, right? <coughs> said what amount we had for each class and put it in a table. That's exactly what a probability distribution does, except instead of classes, we have the possible outcomes, or in other words, the values of my random variable. So a probability distribution is based on the outcomes or the values that my random variable can take and the probabilities for each of those outcomes or each of those values that my random variable can take. So it looks just like a frequency distribution, just like it. We're going to have a table, like a t-chart. We're going to have some columns. 
On the left hand side we'll have values, our random variable values. On the right hand side we'll have the probabilities and that's a probability distribution. It just puts it in a table for us. So probability distribution, what this does is a table that gives us the probability for each value of a random variable. Table that gives the probability for each value of a random variable. Let's look at one and kind of flesh all this, these ideas out. Let's go ahead and do our probability distribution for rolling a die. We've been talking about that already today. Let's actually do it. So here's a probability distribution for rolling a die. Probability distribution is set up like this. You have your x's and you have your probability of achieving that outcome or probability of getting that value of x. In our case, can you tell me <coughs> What are my x's if I'm rolling a single die? What are my x's? One through six. What was that? One through six. One through six, sure. And, and I heard one through six over here as well. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? The, the random variable there is x, and x just has to take on every value that we could get out of rolling a die. If our die is our standard one through six die, then those values are, well, we have one through six. Those are my values of x my random variable can take on just this many, just six, if I have a standard die. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Good, so you kind of understand the idea of a random variable then, right? It's just our outcomes that we get from the procedure. Now, the probability says, what's the probability of getting each of these values? So, what's the probability that you're going to roll a one? Mm -hmm. What's the probability you're going to roll a two? How about a three? Is it going to change? Not if you have a standard die, right? Because that, that's the reason that we have a die, is that the chances are equal to get all six sides. We'd have one-sixth for every value of our random variable. <coughs> so we've got a couple things going on. We have this thing called the random variable. That's just telling us that the value of our outcome can change, but the random variable has to take the place of every possible value. So one through six in our case for the die. The probability, that's just what's the chance. This Again, it's classical probability here, isn't it? Classical probability. What's the probability that you're going to get each of these? Now, we can use either classical probability or observed probability depending on the context of our problem here. I just want to reinforce those concepts as we keep moving through this stuff. <clears throat> so we have a random variable. We have a probability distribution. We haven't really talked about discrete yet. A discrete random variable Discrete means, what was discrete mean again? Countable. Sure, countable or finite. And random variable, those are just the values of a procedure that we can get. So a discrete random variable signifies a procedure where all you can get out of it are countable or finite number of items. That's what a discrete random variable signifies. So it's a variable with a finite or countable number of values. Okay, examples of discrete. If I counted the people in this classroom, uh, that would be discrete because I couldn't get something like 42.3785 people, could I? Geez, I sure hope not. That'd be gross. It's not even Halloween yet. I'm talking about just memory and people. 
<laughs> no, no. Yeah, you're going to get a whole number of people, right? We can count every person that walks in this room. That would be something that's discreet. Or, I use this example all the time, but uh, if you count up the number of eggs a chicken can lay in a week, are you going to get something that's discreet or continuous? What do you think? Is it going to lay potentially 3.2 eggs? That'd be weird too, right? It's like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> Didn't have to push that all the way out. Point two. Got it. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Right, so this countable, this discrete idea is you have a whole number of something, or it's countable, or there's finite. So there's only a certain, certain possible uh, number of values you can actually choose from. So for instance, if I labeled my die, right, it wouldn't have to be one, two, three, four, five. What if my die, my die were labeled, there was only six sides still, but I label it 1.135, that's one side. The other one's 2.002, .002. that's the other side. You with me on this? There's still only be six choices. Even though I would have a decimal there, I can only get six things out of it. That's, that's finite. You with me on the difference? So it not necessarily means a whole number. It means it's countable, sure, or there's only a certain amount that you can get out of your procedure. It doesn't have an endless number of possibilities. I'm not sure if you're with me on that. Okay, that's discrete. Countable, finite. A continuous random variable would be everything else. uncountable or infinite. We'll just say infinite. A variable with an infinite number of values. Possible values. Let me give you a for instance on this because a lot of people get confused between discrete and continuous. They're like, well, I know that discrete means countable, keep counting them, or, or typically finite. There's only a certain number possible. Well, how, how can we possibly get something that's continuous? Well, here's what continuous means. Continuous means an infinite number of possible values. Here's the way this would work. If you're picking people at random, if you're picking at people at random, do they have to be exactly five foot seven, or exactly five foot eight, or exactly five foot nine? Can you find someone in between there? That typically almost nobody's exactly five foot seven, right? So let's say we found we have this range of five foot seven to five foot eight. That's our range right now. Can you find someone between five seven and five eight? Sure, let's say they were five, seven and a half. Is that the only two outcomes that you possibly get? Could you get more than five foot seven, five foot seven and a half, and five foot eight? Sure, what if you pick someone between that? Five foot seven, three quarter. Do you see the point? You can always find someone between that, that, those two numbers. Are you with me on that? No matter how small you go, can you find someone who fits between there? That means that if you keep doing it forever and ever, you have an infinite number of possible values. And you can't count them. You can't say, oh, what's after... Um, Five foot seven. What's what's the number? What's the the measurement after five foot seven? You can't just say it's five foot eight because you don't know how I'm measuring it. It could be five foot seven point zero 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 one, right? But you can go five point zero 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 one, and that'd be uncountable. You can't say the next one in line. Do you get that? So it's infinite number of values and it's uncountable. 